After the Nintendo World Championships at E3 was the Bethesda press conference. Bethesda showed off some awesome stuff, starting with some gameplay of both single player and multiplayer from the new Doom. They showed off some awesome new melee moves such as ripping a demon's leg off and stuffing it into his face. And they also showed off some sweet ass chainsaw kills. And some new gameplay was also shown, with the ability to climb onto objects and ledges, and you even come equipped with a jetpack that allows you to do a kind of double jump. Also, in the multiplayer, they showed off some gameplay modes for both co-op and deathmatch style games. They also talked about Doom Snap Map, where players can create and share maps and even various different game modes, and all that looked pretty badass. Then, they finished off the Doom presentation with a little more single player gameplay, where they showed off some gameplay from Hell. And this appeared to be one of the most badass versions of Hell to ever be put into a Doom game. They showed many different demons and ended the presentation with a look at one of the scariest demons in the Doom universe. A Cyber Demon. Or was it a Baron of Hell? I'm not really sure. I'll have to check that out. They moved on to show some gameplay from a new IP called Battlecry which looks to be an online multiplayer battle game where players fight for one of various different nations in a warlike scenario. But they don't just use guns, but also various different and creative melee weapons. I wasn't too interested in this, but I gotta admit, it does look kind of interesting. Next up, Arcane Games came up to show off their new game, and sequel to a game they brought to us in 2012, Dishonored 2. In Dishonored 2, we will no longer just be able to play as a male protagonist, but they also brought on a female protagonist as well, and you can choose between either of them, and each of them have their own special moves and abilities. I am sad to say that I still have not played the original Dishonored, but with how good Dishonored 2 looks, I may just have to get on that. Following that, they talked about the release of Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel Unlimited, and how a few new areas would be added to the world this year. And they also announced Elder Scrolls Legends, which will be an Elder Scrolls themed card battle game similar to Hearthstone, being a World of Warcraft card battle game. I like Hearthstone quite a bit, and I am pretty sure I will like this game as well, but so far little else has been said about it beyond that. Finally came the moment that everyone was waiting for, the Fallout presentation. But before we get to Fallout 4, let's talk about another Fallout game that Bethesda released an iOS mobile game called Fallout Shelter, where you can build and run your own vault. You can send your people out in the wasteland to gather supplies for your vault, and you can raise them and level each of them up. And you can build rooms to make your people more equipped to survive in the world, such as a schoolroom to raise intelligence, and a bar to raise charisma. You will also have to protect your people from various dangers by putting out fires and fighting back against rad roaches and bandit raids. And they wouldn't make us wait long for this because it was released directly following the Bethesda presentation, and you can download it right now if you want. So if you have an iOS device, go do that, it looks pretty sweet. Now for the news that everyone was waiting for, Fallout 4. The game looks amazing, and I don't know why it didn't look this good in the first trailer they released for it not too long ago. Maybe that was in an earlier build of the game, I don't know, but the game looks great. They showed that just like in the previous Fallout games, you can play as either a male or a female and can completely customize your character in the mirror in your home before the bombs even start to drop. And then you awake 200 some odd years later to a nuclear wasteland near post-apocalyptic Boston. It was then showed how you could meet a canine companion and could give him commands to go to different places or even retrieve certain items for you. And I thought that was pretty cool. And the dog's pretty cute. They also talked about how there were 50 base weapons in the game, but you would have the ability to craft at least 700 different varieties of weapons using the supplies you find around the wasteland, making everything you find from duct tape to toys useful for something. And you can also customize your own power armor suit and give it several different abilities including a jetpack, which is pretty badass. And a lot of games nowadays are including jetpacks in them, but you won't find me complaining. But the thing that got me most excited 
was the ability to completely build and manage your own settlement with pre-built parts and you can place them in any manner you want, both inside and outside of structures. You can run electricity to certain things like lights and turrets, and you could build the structure in any way you want, and furnish it in any way you want. It's not like Skyrim where things are bought and pre-placed. You can place things literally nearly anywhere you want them. It even appeared like you could move people into your settlements to help run it and protect it. This blew my mind, and I was instantly hit with thoughts of all kinds of different settlements. I don't think you can turn any building into a settlement area. I think there are pre-designating spots where you can build, kind of like the places where you can build houses in Skyrim. But other than that, it looks like you can build it in any way you want to. They also revealed that the collector's edition of the game would come with a real-life pit boy that you could actually strap onto your arm, and you could open it up and place your phone inside of it. And there would be a pit boy app that would work just as the one in the actual game, so you can actually have a real, working pit boy on your arm. And I think that is freaking badass. Of course, you can still get the app for your phone, even if you don't have the collector's edition, and that's still awesome. And you can even play games that you find within the game, on the Pip-Boy, such as Fallout's own little version of Donkey Kong. That's pretty cool, I like that idea. And they revealed that we wouldn't have to wait long for the release of Fallout 4, because it's going to be released later this year, on November 10th, 2015. Man, I guess now I'm going to have to get a freaking PS4. I was very impressed with Bethesda's presentation at E3. They really blew me away and left me nearly hyperventilating with anticipation. I can't wait to play these games, and I can't wait to see what the rest of E3 has to offer. This has been Doughboy with Hardcore Academy, and peace out.